Hi, my name is Brianna, and for my YouTube project, the question I looked at was, are people with IBD at an increased risk for developing COVID-19, and can a healthy diet or supplementation help prevent it? So for an overview, IBD is a bowel disease, and there are two major types. One is ulcerative colitis, and the other is Crohn's disease. It's a chronic inflammation of your digestive tract that affects anywhere from your mouth to the anus. Ulcerative colitis affects only the large intestine of where Crohn's disease can affect anywhere in your digestive tract. Symptoms of IBD can range from mild to severe, and the most common ones are diarrhea, fatigue, abdominal pain and cramping, blood in your stool, reduced appetite, and unintended weight loss. The exact causes of IBD are unknown, but there are some risk factors, which include age, race or ethnicity, your family history, smoking, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. There are different treatments for IBD, and the most common ones are biologics. Biologics are immunosuppressants made from living organisms and are given via injections subcutaneously or intravenously that work on your immune system to target the inflammation caused by IBD. Patients who undergo biologic therapies will have a lowered immune system and will have a harder time fighting off infections than someone who is not on a biologic therapy regimen. So with the outbreak of COVID-19, will patients who have IBD be at a higher risk for developing COVID-19? And is there any way that has been shown yet in research to help minimize the risk from eating a healthy diet or taking any supplements? So COVID-19 is a newly identified beta coronavirus and clinical symptoms in COVID-19 will vary between patients, but most people have mild form of the disease with no or flu-like symptoms, including dry cough, fever, runny nose, and fatigue. Additional symptoms can be shivering, throat pain, headache, joint pain, nausea, and diarrhea. In some severe forms of the disease, marked inflammation and progressive pneumonia occur, which lead to difficulties in breathing. Respiratory failure due to pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and multi-organ failure can occur in severe cases, and those are associated with high mortality in patients with COVID-19. ACE2 is expressed on pneumoniocytes of the lower airways, possibly explaining the high frequency of pneumonia in affected patients. Initial studies suggested that GI symptoms such as diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting are not very common in COVID-19, but a recent study showed that GI symptoms are more frequently present than initially thought. In an analysis of 651 patients, it showed that 11% of them presented with nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. A recent study in over 100 outpatients with mild courses of COVID-19 showed that the presence of diarrhea in approximately 30% of patients suggests that diarrhea may be a frequent hallmark of the mild disease. The COVID-19 receptor ACE2 is particularly highly expressed in intestinal epithelial cells from the terminal ileum and to a lesser extent in the colon where mucosal emission in patients with IBD Crohn's disease in UC is frequently detected. ACE may act as a co-receptor for nutrient uptake, particularly for amino acid reabsorption from food. Also, ACE2 activity in the colon was elevated in non-inflamed colon and IBD as compared with controls and active IBD. The average expression of soluble ACE2 was shown to be increased in patients with IBD and a higher ACE2 to ACE ratio in plasma was noted in patients with IBD as compared with controls without IBD. These findings suggested the possibility that patients with IBD might be particularly susceptible to COVID-19. However, there is no evidence so far that patients with IBD are highly susceptible to COVID-19. There was a recent study in Wuhan which studied 318 patients with IBD during the local outbreak of the disease 
and did not report any COVID-19 cases. The reasons for this observation were entirely clear, but might relate to the local adjustments of protective measures to prevent infection, the particular awareness of the IBD patient cohort to hygiene and infection prevention and the modulation of immunosuppressive therapy. Also, patients with IBD might be less susceptible to COVID-19 and further studies in this regard are highly warranted. Why do we think IBD patients will be at an increased risk for coronavirus infection? Coronavirus bind to their target cells through angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2, a monocarboxy peptidase best known for cleaving several peptides within the renin angiotensin system and other substrates. ACE2 is expressed by epithelial cells of the lung, intestine, kidney, and blood vessels, and it's present in the terminal ileum and colon as well, in concentrations that are highest in the body. Analysis of the distribution of COVID-19 among different biological samples of patients with COVID-19 has shown that up to 50% of the fecal samples were positive. Also, more than one-fifth of the patients remained positive in their stools after being negative in respiratory samples. This might explain why some COVID-19 patients experience gastrointestinal symptoms and would imply that COVID-19 can spread through the fecal route. The expression of the AC2 is increased in the inflamed cut of patients with IBD. These observations may suggest that the inflamed gut of IBD patients can represent an optimal doorway through which the virus can enter human tissues, but based on a recent PubMed search from March 17th, there is no evidence to suggest that COVID-19 will occur more frequently in IBD patients than in the general population. Another relevant aspect for COVID-19 in IBD patients will relate to the current therapy as many patients are taking immunosuppressants like azathioprine or methotrexate for inducing and maintaining remission as well as preventing any IBD complications. The use of these compounds have been associated with an increased risk of infections because they block intracellular signals that are needed for the host to fight pathogens. But also, it is noteworthy that suppression of the effector cytokine-driven inflammatory response in IBD could be beneficial not only to dampen the ongoing mucosal inflammation, but also in preventing COVID-19-driven pneumonia. So the overall available evidence suggests that IBD patients do not have an increased risk of developing COVID-19 and should stay on all their IBD medications. The patients that are receiving the immunosuppressants should be carefully monitored for any symptoms or signs suggesting COVID-19. So the second part of my question was, can a healthy diet or supplementation help prevent COVID-19 in people with IBD? Eating can possess a problem for people with IBD as it causes abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and or vomiting when eating certain foods or taking certain medications. Everybody is different in which foods may be a trigger, so there isn't one diet that people with IBD should follow. One person may be able to eat rice with no problem, while another person can end up in pain from eating the same meal. If a certain food bothers someone, they should eliminate it from their diet if it is possible. During a flare, it is advised to keep a low-fiber diet to reduce the chance of obstruction. People with IBD are already at a high risk for malnutrition, and nutrition is linked to immunity and infections. So poorly nourished patients can be at a higher risk for developing infections, including COVID-19. When IBD patients are malnourished, they typically experience nutrient loss, which can come from lack of appetite, blood and diarrhea, or malabsorption during digestion. So it is advised that they take supplements for nutrients they are lacking. Because COVID-19 is still new and not much is known about it yet, there are currently no specific studies of foods or supplements that can help treat or prevent COVID-19 in patients with IBD. Vitamins and minerals such as vitamins A, C, D, E, zinc, selenium, and magnesium are related to immunity and also consuming antioxidant-rich foods may help to boost the immune system. So patients with IBD may focus on adding those to their current diet to boost their health in this time of COVID-19 where more research is still needed. 
Foods that are high in vitamin A include sweet potatoes, spinach, and carrots. Foods high in vitamin C include guavas, kale, and papaya. Foods high in vitamin D include mushrooms and fortified foods such as soy milk and cereals. Foods high in vitamin E include sunflower seeds, almonds, and avocado. Foods high in zinc include legumes, nuts and seeds, and whole grains. Foods high in selenium include Brazil nuts, brown rice, and baked beans. Foods high in magnesium include dark chocolate, avocado, and nuts. And antioxidant-rich foods include blueberries, strawberries, and artichokes.